Hey guys, and welcome to My Gaming Journal, where we examine video games in the format of a daily journal. Tonight, we examine Demon's Souls for the PlayStation 5, and see how long it took for me to beat it. Spoiler warning for those who've not played the game. Please enjoy! Dear Journal. So for those who don't know, this game is a remake of a game that came out years ago that was originally developed from software. This remake has now been developed from Blue Point Games. And the thing about this game is this was basically the blueprint of Dark Souls. And I am by no means an expert when it comes to Dark Souls games. I have only played a few. But the biggest consensus that I see is there's not much of a story. So me trying to explain what the story of this game is is not exactly easy because there really is no story. The story is mostly in the background. You have to search for it, basically. All I can tell you is that a fog randomly shows up in the beginning of the game and within that fog is a bunch of demons that you have to kill. And you do that right after you create your own character i went with a night look i named my character totoro because i just got done watching my neighbor totoro and really i mean the gameplay is pretty much standard dark souls you die a lot but i will say the graphics are great from what i've seen so far and the thing about dark souls that i like is that you do see a progression of your skills you die pretty quickly in this game, but because you play it so repetitively, you learn from your mistakes, you get better. Now, as far as what I didn't like about the game, I feel this game at times punishes you for trying to get ahead. And the first thing you learn in the game is that you die right away and your corporal spirit tries to regain its body. The biggest way to do that is by defeating the boss. However, if you find other means to bring yourself back to life, the game then activates what it calls a black tendency and makes the game 10 times harder. You have to fight new enemies that will attack you right when you show up in the world. You don't even, you have seconds to act and your attacks don't do as much damage their attacks do doubled. It got to be so frustrating where I was this close to quitting. Because it, it never did that with Bloodborne, Sekiro, or any of the Dark Soul games. This was an exception though. I had to use a guide with this game in order to figure out how to get back to a white tendency. Once I figured that out, I made sure never to bring myself back to life. The other thing I didn't appreciate is that you need to use a guide in order to know which world you go to. Most games start with world one and then you go in order until the very end. One, two, three, so forth. This though jumps around quite a bit. You start at world one, but then you go to like world four and then you go back to world two and then you go to world three and then you jump to world six or whatever there's no order and it doesn't tell you where to go so i had to look online to see what that was but anyway i feel like i'm at the halfway point so moving on to the second half so this is where it gets interesting the first half of the game i would say was incredibly difficult the second half of the game to me is the opposite from the dragon god and onwards it becomes too easy like to the point where i'm only really dying when it comes to on the way to the boss while as most cases i didn't die really against the second half of the bosses except for a couple of cases and then you get to the final boss the true final boss and it's just this like slug frog that can barely move and it just you feel bad almost killing it because it doesn't put up a fight at all and it's just a bit of a bummer that 
there wasn't a proper balance when it came to the difficulty of the game. It shouldn't have been too hard and then too easy. It should have been just hard overall. But apparently, I activated the good ending because I didn't kill the maiden at the end, which just made the fog disappear. If you beat the game, you can just redo it when you activate New Game Plus, but I'm not a completionist, so I don't do that. And that's the game. Overall, the visuals were great, and it is fun gameplay albeit frustrating at times, that just gets bogged down by unbalanced difficulty and a concept introduced that made me almost quit the game. Nevertheless, if you like Dark Souls, then you will probably like this. But if you don't like Dark Souls, I don't think this is going to win you over. Which is why I'm going to give this game a 74%. Now, tune in next time where we examine what ends up being a lot of people's game of the year for 2020, Hades. See you then.